What's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I'm your host, Nick Riqueda of Riqueda Law, and today I'm going to tell you how George Azunian, also known as Maddox, one of the internet's first original tough guys, lost the funniest lawsuit in the world where he sued a whole list of people and major corporations over being called a cuck. Yes, I'm talking about, I am talking about uh, Azunian versus Herrera et al. The caption is here. You can look at that list of defendants. We've got uh, Dax Herrera, professionally known as Dick Masterson, Foundation Digital LLC, Greg Bozer, Lauren Baker, CMGRP Incorporated, doing business as Weber Shandwick, Joshua Kaufman, Asterios Coconos, Trevor Burt, Patreon Incorporated, and one sad little Patreon employee by the name of Jordan Cope, whose only crime was responding to a relentless barrage of emails from an insane internet personality. <laughs> so... As you probably know by now, in November, November of 2017, Maddox filed this lawsuit in the state of New York. Why would he do that? No one can really give you a good answer on why Maddox would file in the state of New York. But I think as this video goes on, you'll start to see where the wheels fell off the bus. And it was right out of the garage, guys. It was right out of the garage. <laughs> but let's, let's get to that. Let's get to that. So Maddox sues all of these people in, in court in New York for somewhere between $20 million and $400 million. No one really knows the exact amount. The problem is the complaint. Uh, the complaint is a document that you initiate a lawsuit with was so poorly drafted and so confusing that there's no way to tell exactly what relief was sought or what claims and who the claims were effectively against. Ultimately, this case would be dismissed. This case would be dismissed with prejudice against most of the parties, without prejudice against Asterios Kokonos, who would later have it dismissed with prejudice when Maddox failed to replead. So you know this, you know this, but where did Maddox go wrong? Where did Maddox go wrong in this lawsuit? That's the big question so that we can all avoid the types of mistakes that Maddox made. Let me give you an idea of where Maddox went wrong. Attorney Kevin Landau. Maddox inexplicably hires an attorney based partly in Michigan and partly in New York to file a case against primarily defendants located in California where Maddox lives. No one knows why. To this day, other than Maddox, no one knows why Maddox would choose Kevin Landau, but it's a choice that would prove ultimately fatal to his lawsuit. Because as I said, the initial complaint was drafted so poorly, allegedly by Kevin Landau, that no one was able to figure out any of the claims, if there were any claims. Uh, they weren't able to be cognizable claims in front of the court. No one could figure out what exactly each person was accused of or if they were accused of anything at all. It almost looked like, it almost looked like Kevin Landau in drafting this document was trying to get a couple big name companies. Uh, you'll notice there are three companies that are that are named in the lawsuit, Foundation Digital, Weber Shanwick, and Patreon. He was hoping that those companies would fear bad press and maybe make a hasty settlement and pay out some money very quickly. That was not an, a very effective strategy, as of course, history will bear out. But you can see how this lawsuit has affected Kevin Landau's reputation. It opened the eyes of people to the way he runs his law practice, or seems to run his law practice. I guess we don't actually know, but you can read all about his exploits on the internet, or you can go to www.kevinlandau.com and find attorney Kevin Landau from the Landau Group. I don't know. That's up to you. 
that's up to you. But where this case is, I don't want to say where it went wrong. It went wrong right out of the gate. The complaint is so deficient. Guys, when I first read this case, I, I, read, the, I read the complaint right away, pretty much the day it was made public. And I immediately thought that a non-lawyer had written that complaint. I thought Maddox himself had drafted it. Uh, actually, I, I was gleefully laughing at the fact that someone didn't bother to hire an attorney to draft the document. They maybe just enlisted the services of an attorney to file a document, um, which some people do. It's not advisable. It's not advisable. But as time went on, we would notice similarities between other papers submitted by Kevin Landau and come to the really horrifying conclusion that Kevin Landau had probably written the initial complaint as well. What is the problem with this? Why was this such a big mistake? Well, let me show you. Let me show you why it was such a big mistake. Eventually, after lots of motions back and forth, after a very long period of time going from November all the way to May, May 16th, of 2018, November of 2017 to May 16th of 2018, when the parties would finally meet in court for oral arguments in front of a real judge who would have to try and figure out what was in front of him. What was the judge's synopsis of this? What I'm saying is this complaint is such a mess that I can't address these issues because I can't specifically point to what's being alleged as your client or your client. And just imagine him pointing to the different lawyers in the room for all of the different parties. He has no idea. It's actually impossible to figure out who did what in this complaint or if anyone did anything. But needless to say, if, you're, if your judge doesn't understand what's being stated in your complaint, you're, you've got an uphill battle. Right out, right out of the gate. During arguments, things would go very well for Kevin Landau. We have such moments as this, where Kevin Landau asserts that something doesn't matter. Your Honor, that does not matter. In the court, oh yes it does. Ask the Supreme Court of the United States. Kevin Landau would make all sorts of basic errors about how the law functions in the state of New York and in federal, uh, in federal jurisdictions as well. He seemed to have a basic misunderstanding of the mechanical implementation of the statutes he was trying to cite as the basis for the claims for Maddox versus all of these other parties. The judge even went so far as to call the document fake news, the, the document and the allegations against all the parties brought up by Maddox uh, as fake news. <laughs> eventually concluding that we could spend the rest of the day trying to parse out the complaint. It's hopeless. And dismissing all of the claims. Dismissing all of the claims against all of the parties. Not one was able to survive through uh, to, to be heard by the court. Nothing was actually heard because nothing was ever articulated. And over and over, uh, Kevin Landau would be just smashed in oral argument by the other attorneys or by the judge himself, which is a little embarrassing. But there were some gems to come out of this oral argument, of course. We've got, we've got various lines from the judge here. Maddox Azunian is a cuck. We've got the judge asking if this is the document with Santa cuck on the picture. We've got the court having to explain the word cuck to the attorney because the attorney of course here here's kevin landau uh what a cuck is your honor and the court says look let's say it's a fool okay why can't i call someone a fool and of course he means why can't i call your client a cuck that's the ultimate question in this case we all know what cucks look like we all know what cucks sound like even a judge a retiring judge in the middle of New York, who handles commercial complaints and clearly doesn't spend a lot of time on the internet, knows what cucks look and sound like, and he can identify them a mile away. Ultimately, that became Maddox's problem. In New York, much as in the rest of the country, it's still legal 
shockingly to make fun of people. It's it's shockingly legal to call them a cuck. It's shockingly legal to say that they're stupid or wrong or a dirty liar or backstabber or that they don't deserve to have a podcast or that they're ruining their own show or that their audience hates them or that everybody on earth is going against them. This is all legal. That was ultimately Maddox's problem. Maddox let his feelings dictate his actions and those feelings led him to an opportunistic lawyer by the name of Kevin Landau who would lead him ridiculously fumbling down uh, a dirt path towards destruction in court. It would cost Maddox unknown amounts of money, but it couldn't have been cheap. Kevin Landau is not an inexpensive attorney. It would cost Asterios Kokonos uh, somewhere north of $20,000. It would cost uh, Dax Herrera, professionally known as Dick Masterson, somewhere north of twenty dollars to $25,000. It would cost Patreon and Weber Shanwick tons of money. We don't know how much it would cost them ultimately, but we do know that one guy's feelings cost tens of thousands of dollars to himself and others, and ultimately may have cost him his career on the internet. I've done tons of videos and lots of coverage on this topic. You can go ahead and watch all of them, but I wanted to provide a short summary because there was a recent Vice article. People are kind of talking about this. Uh, Asterios Kokonos is still trying to fight to get some of the money that he spent on this lawsuit back from Maddox and his shyster attorney, Kevin Landau. Interestingly, the crux of that motion for sanctions comes from the fact that Maddox, and it seems by extension Kevin Landau, in drafting the initial complaint, lied openly in court by say, stating that a person named Heather S. sent some emails to Weber Shanwick. Turns out, as Maddox would later admit in an affidavit before the court, Heather S. was actually Maddox posing as Heather S. This, of course, is not only perjury, which is a huge problem <laughs> in any lawsuit. You run the risk of perjury because you're making statements under oath all of the time. And when you make a knowing, a knowing misrepresentation or falsehood to the court, the courts don't take too kindly to that. So you've got the problem of perjury, but you also have a couple other crimes being potentially committed in New York, like criminal impersonation. Because Maddox said he was an actual member, uh, Heather S., from the publication Condé Nast. So he claimed to be a member of the journalistic community, a journalist at a specific publication, and there is actually a Heather S. that works at Condé Nast. Since he claimed to be that person in order to cause harm to someone else, that's a crime. That's a crime. So Maddox admitted to a crime in New York, may have committed perjury, in his statement, and of course, cost Asterios Kokonos, uh, Weber Shanwick, and other people a lot of money going against not only his baseless, but his outright false allegations. And of course, all of this could have been stopped if he had hired an attorney with the fortitude to say, we can't do this, we can't do this with the wisdom to draft a competent complaint and with the ability to stand before a judge and articulate the causes of, a of action that brought them to court. In summary, Maddox's key mistake, why he lost his lawsuit, why he brought his lawsuit in the first place, why he may end up owing Asterios Kokonos and Weber Shanwick a ton of money, and why he may have lost his career is because he went and hired against all logical, reasonable assumptions a guy named Kevin Landau in a state 1,800 miles away who turned out to be the worst possible lawyer to hire for this case. I hope this summary video helps you out. 
I hope you find it entertaining and interesting. If you want to find out a whole lot more about this, please just go ahead and hit this playlist that this video is in. Start with Lawsuit 1, and you can go through every single word of every single document. I will explain all of the all of the goings on and the legalese to you. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do for me. Um, but ultimately, of course, some real people had some real consequences from it. Thanks for watching. If you don't uh, already, go ahead and click like, click subscribe. If you want to see more about this lawsuit, other ridiculous internet lawsuits, I cover them all the time. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Peace.